So, I was just helping my, uh, I, I come through that gate and, um, brighten up, there we go. Come through that gate back there and uh, I could see that the farmer wanted to turn in. So I said, I'll oh, hold the gate open for you if you want. He said, oh yeah, cheers mate. He'd had a new van, so he was proper struggling with the clutch like you've just seen there. So I was just stood there for two minutes, holding the gate like a wally. Anyway, that is all besides the point. That's all just part of this adventure. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm at a location that I've wanted to come to for a while. Um, and it's got a cool name of Norba Erratics. And it's up here. Oh, the farmer's off now. See you later, mate. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now I made a video recently where I was talking about my telephoto lens and uh, how I use it a lot um, instead of my wide angle. And I felt a bit sorry. I felt a bit sorry for the old wide angle lens if I'm being honest. I love my Takina 11-16. to And I was saying in this particular video how I didn't like to shoot wide vistas um, necessarily with my wide angle lens all the time. Which I think kind of begs the question is, well, what do you use it for then? <laughs> And that's kind of what I, talk, what I want to talk about in today's video. Um, and I think that this location, or the subjects at this location, are going to be absolutely perfect. So, I am buzzing, I'm looking forward to it. Let's crack on. guys this is absolutely spectacular and it's these very rocks that have inspired me to come to this location with the camera and with the wide angle lens today and um, now before we get into any photography I just wanted to talk briefly about these rocks so any geologists out there you're gonna love this <laughs> um, but I didn't know any of this and I found it really interesting so like I said before, this place is called Norba Erratics. I thought, that's a strange name, what's going on there? Norba, which is the name of this area, Erratics um, are these rocks, that's what they're known as. And erratic is a rock that has been transported and then deposited in the last ice age. So all the ice melted around about 12,000 years ago and then they stopped being transported. They were just dumped here. And this apparently, from what I've read, is one of the best examples of these erratics in the whole of Britain, which is absolutely amazing. What a privilege to be here. I can already tell, as I'm sure a lot of you guys can, these are gonna be some fantastic subjects for us, um, especially using the wide angle lens today as well. And I cannot wait to get into it. Um, so you can see there's loads over on this cliff edge as well on the left hand side of your screen. And of course, the views in the background are just absolutely gorgeous. Unbelievable, so we're on the border with and the Yorkshire Dales National Park and the Forest of Boland today. It is glorious. The weather conditions are perfect. We've got a real mixed bag, that's why I've got my full waterproofs on even though the sun's out. It's gonna be really changeable and I think it's gonna suit everything that we're trying to achieve today. So, there's plenty more where this came from. Let's get a little bit higher up. So I have to apologise, I really honestly do. This video is supposed to be about landscape photography and wide angle lenses, and it will, I promise you. Stick around a couple of minutes, we will be taking photographs and I will be talking about wide angle lenses. This place, honestly, what's going on there? Madness. I tell you what, I actually know about this phenomenon because I've read about it, so stick around, I'll talk to you about it. I've been to so many places in the world, I'm, I've been very privileged to see some incredibly inspiring spots. Uh, both in the UK and the rest of the world. I can honestly say that this place is one of the best places I've been to in the world. 
I honestly mean that because it's just a feeling that I get upon arriving here. This is special. I mean, you probably have to be into this sort of thing. You know, the Ice Age, um, these erratics, um, you know, being inspired by these huge natural historical events, if you want to call them that. Uh, I'm really into that sort of thing. So perhaps it's that, you know, somebody that's not into it might just get here and say, it's just a pile of rocks, mate. What you want about? This is amazing. And we're not even into the photography yet. What a spot. I cannot wait to get the camera out. I'm sure you guys can't either. Right, let's get it out. Let's get it out and let's get on with this. Whoa. All right, so we've got the camera out. We've got the Takina wide angle 11 to 16 millimeter lens on. Top draw now, you see the tripod down here. Before we stick the camera on the tripod, I want to talk to you all about perspective and the importance of perspective when you're using a wide angle. And more importantly, the control um, that you have as the landscape photographer over the perspective of a particular scene and a particular subject. Honestly, this is the most perfect of examples. I'm so glad how this has worked out. If you're still with me, thank you for waiting and ap apologies that I didn't get straight into this subject. I am just overwhelmed by the beauty of this place. So let's start with the obvious. Of course, we're going to have this in our frame. Now, what I'm trying to achieve here in terms of perspective is to make this the king. I want this to be the king of the photograph. I want, I want it to be no doubt whatsoever that this is in charge. This is the most prominent feature within the whole photograph. Now, this is a little bit different. You know, think about a lone tree. You can't really go too far wrong, you know? Um, it's gonna dominate the scene in pretty much any circumstances. I mean, look at it. The eye's gonna be so drawn to it. It's incredible. So I'm gonna put a little clip up on the screen and this is just filming from my camera here. All right, so I'm gonna move back and I'm gonna try and show you what composition I'm going for, why I'm doing it and what I'm actually trying to avoid, right? So we'll start off with what I'm trying to avoid. Um, so if I turn around, just make sure that, yeah, that'll be spot on. So if you look at here, obviously it'll be a bit bright on the right hand side. If I get really down low, then I am letting the subject be higher than the camera. You don't want it the other way around. If you're the other way around, if I go up here, look at that, the, the subject loses its dominance and the camera is then in the dominant position. You know, all you have to think about really is height. If I'm higher than the rock, then I'm in a more dominant position. Think of it like that. It's a really easy way to remember it. If I'm lower down as the photographer, you know, I'm obviously doing this purposefully, purposefully, and I'm allowing the subject um, to get more, to be more dominant or prominent within the frame. So if you look, if I was to get even like very, very low, I mean, look at that. It doesn't get more prominent than, than that. We've centralized the subject and we're as low down as we can possibly go. So that's dominance to the max. Now what I'm gonna do is go for something a little bit like this. And here's my reasoning. Um, I feel, I think I, I touched on this a second ago, I feel like this is a really dominant subject no matter what, you know, like, like the lone tree, like I was saying. There's gonna be absolutely no doubt whatsoever that this is gonna own the whole photograph. This is gonna be the king subject. It's gonna be in charge of everything. This is what the viewer's eye is gonna be drawn to first. So I don't really feel like I have to centralize it. So what I'm doing is sticking the rock on the right hand side like this and allowing, um, allowing us to see a little bit of the shadow from that low winter sunlight, which is absolutely fantastic, which cuts across the frame. And then of course we're capturing this valley in the background and a few of these sort of peaks, which I really like. So that's the idea. And of course, one main thing here is to make sure that I get low enough that we can see through the gaps in them little rocks at the bottom that are holding this huge boulder up. That is significant. That's really, really pivotal in whether or not this image works because that's the whole point here. You know, we're trying to get across the story of this rock, the phenomenon that is, this has been dumped here at the last ice age. Um, oh yeah, and that very phenomenon. I'll tell you what, I'll get this, on the, tr this camera on the tripod now. We'll get set up for the composition. We'll do a bit of fine tuning and I'll tell you why or how this has been perched precariously on these little rocks.
Right, so I'm doing a couple of things just a little bit differently, but you've seen the bulk of the composition, so I don't need to go into this too much. The composition is exactly the same. Uh, the sun's gone behind some cloud now, which I prefer. I've waited for that. I felt like the light earlier was just a little bit too harsh. Um, also, I'm firing off a long exposure. I'm just going to see how that looks. Uh, so much better than just, you know, a, a standard exposure, I think gonna fire another one off um, I think at first it was about one two hundredth of a second I put the 15 stop Nissi neutral density filter on the front and it's getting me about a two to three minute exposure and what we're getting is I'm having to wait for it and, and hit, you know hit the shutter at the right time but the clouds are coming this way heading over the rock which is fantastic so it captures these lines these streaks as the clouds move of course away from us and I think it gives the image, it definitely gives the image another, another dynamic, but I think it also helps in a strange way to add prominence to this subject, this rock, which is awesome. So yeah, two to three minute exposure, F9, I focused on the rock, ISO 100. Now, briefly, what's going on here? Why is the rock perched on these other rocks, these smaller rocks? Now, I'm glad I researched this, else I've had a, had a got here and it would have blown my mind. <laughs> But we've got these areas you'll see around of, of limestone, which is different from whatever this rock is. I don't know much, but I know enough to understand what's going on here. Um, over thousands and thousands of years, the limestone has eroded from um, persistent acid rain, which means that the rocks underneath the giant boulder, being limestone, have eroded away over the years. Um, however, the big boulder, probably because it's a different type of rock, I'm not sure, hasn't been eroded quite as much. Which means that eventually, I say eventually, probably in a few thousand years, the little rocks underneath will keep eroding and the rock will fall. So basically, eventually, uh, it, this, this whole sort of grassland used to be just limestone pavement with all these boulders sitting on top and over the years of erosion, it, you know, there's a lot that have ended up like this. Right, I'll show you this image. I think it's gonna look cool, especially with that long exposure effect. And uh, let's go and see what else we can find because I am loving it here. So you can see the sun coming in um, from my right hand side here. It's fairly harsh, but as the day progresses, we're about one o'clock now, as the day progresses, especially winter, uh, that light's gonna get nicer and nicer. Now, I've come to a different area, still at the erratics, but I've come to this area here, you can see behind me, which is just a proper scattering <laughs> of all these erratics, of all these boulders. And what I wanna try and do now is, hmm, try and photograph a collection of these erratics as opposed to my previous image where it was just one prominent rock. Uh, so this is going to be much more of a challenge but some of that I want to get into and I also want to show you how we can still apply the same um, skills, the same techniques that we were doing before with the single subject but with a group. The main thing we need to try and do here is try and find a group um, of these rocks where we can still create a little bit of order 
you know, and tidiness. We don't just want to set the tripod up somewhere and take a shot of a of a load of rocks. We need to think about how we're um, constructing the foreground. That's a really good way to think about it. Um, so all it takes now is uh, wandering around this area. What we have got, you can see on my face there, if we're shooting in that direction, is some beautiful dramatic back uh, backlight, which is wonderful. So hopefully that light sticks around and hopefully we can si uh, find some of these erratics to photograph in a nice tidy group. So we are dealing with, as you can tell behind me, an incredibly high dynamic range, but oh, we're living the dream. This is what it's all about. One word, light. And I say time and time again, I absolutely adore everything about British weather. This makes my job so much easier. Oh, honestly, this is class, right? So. I finally, as you can see behind the old D7200 there, found a, a worthy group of erratics to use for uh, this composition. I've tidied it up nicely, I'm really happy with the composition. Um, now this video, we're talking about wide angle lenses, perspective, um, is very much aimed at beginners, I'd like to think, or you know, people looking to get into wide angle photography, let's call it. So I don't want to confuse anybody, but I am going to be exposure bracket in here just before we get into the composition. Purely just because you can see behind me, it's impossible for my camera to deal with this. It's so bright up there and it's so dark down there, which means I'm having to take two or three, maybe more photographs, some brighter, some darker, to then merge together in post-processing so that areas of the images, uh, areas of the image aren't too bright or too dark. And that's the only way I can get around it here. I honestly think I can get some, I, I think I'm going to get a really nice photograph here if I could sort it out in post-processing with exposure blending. We've just had a hailstorm, right? Oh man, absolutely, it was like sleety hail. Unbelievable, this is class, this is honestly so cool. Right, wide angle. So I'm um, applying many of the same techniques as I was with that first photograph. So even though it looks like I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not as low as the first photograph here, I'm still low enough so that these rocks here protrude above the horizon and I'm actually I'm still lower than the rocks themselves and like I said before that gives them prominence so although I'm not right on the ground I've still played with perspective a little bit with the wide angle lens by moving myself and the camera more importantly up and down to see which perspective that I prefer I've got the cone shaped rocks in the background here so they're protruding over the horizon ever so slightly one to give them prominence within the frame exactly the same as the last shot but two, we're breaking that horizon, which is gonna give this image depth from front to back. You know, it's two dimensional, but we're trying to give it that three dimensional feel. These rocks, these erratics here are absolutely amazing. What a group, it feels otherworldly. And the light as well, cause it's so dramatic, is just topping that off. So settings are a little bit, are completely all over the place. You know, some shutter speeds are really quick so I can get it dark and exposed for the sky. Some are a little bit longer so I can get the image a bit brighter and exposed for the foreground. Um, I'm shooting at 11mm on the wide angle lens and I'm basically filling the hole at the bottom of the frame with all these erratics. I still want them to be, you know, the main subject. I'd say the main subject in this image is probably going to be the light, the drama. But in terms of a physical subject, it's definitely going to be these erratics. If I can get this right in post-processing, if I can exposure blend this properly, this could be an absolute stunner. I adore this country. I love British weather. Now, honestly, we just had high winds and a hailstorm, sleet. There's not a breath of wind now and the sun's out. Madness. And that's exactly why I came out in these conditions today. So hopefully I can fix this photograph in post-processing or, you know, put it together in post-processing. Really good use of the wide angle lens. Um, really good use of controlling the perspective of these rocks in the foreground. I hope you like this shot.
so what a day honestly um still proper buzzing off this adventure and i stand by it it's one of the best locations i've ever been it's one of the best places i've been to in my life this place is special and uh, i will i will be returning 100 percent um what a privilege honestly thank you all so much for the support to allow me to be out here doing things like this um i really am living my dream and it's down like i said to the support that i receive from you guys watching these videos giving videos a thumbs up comment in below you know the wonderful inspirational emails that i receive it really does mean the world <sighs> thank you very much i really hope you enjoyed this video if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be class. It really helps out my content here on YouTube and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Plenty of mad adventures like this. Right, a uh, cup of tea. I had to say that, didn't I? And uh, I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.